my name is Phil Jarrett. It's lovely to be here in London, heart of London. Oh, that's the kind of warmth I've come. <laughs> You're all right. Um, yeah, it's nice to be in London, the big city. I'm a bit jealous though of you, people who uh, live in big urban areas, because I think you get to say some pretty cool things, things I don't get to say, mate. Things I can't tell you what. I will tell you fucking what where I grew up. If you weren't good at fighting, you better be fucking good at running. <laughs> but I grew up in the countryside, I can't say things like that, because where I grew up, if you weren't good at singing, you better be good at country dancing. Stop <laughs> my fucking wine. Because <laughs> you weren't fucking nothing if you weren't in the school choir in Bishop Swartington. <laughs> You know, Lester, people think living in the countryside is all larks and voluntary incest, but it's not. It's a cold, hard, and predominantly wi fi less way of life. You know, I was growing up, every single day was a struggle, the jam, the fate, the motherfucking rambling. Strawberry season was like the battle of the song. I still wake up screaming, my poor grandmother. My poor grandmother used to drag herself out of bed every day. 10 or 11 a.m. just so she could ring those fucking church bells. Her hands were red raw. Red raw! <laughs> oh, and she died so young. 96 is no age. I said she couldn't down that yard of pims. There's an awful lot of outdated nonsense talked about living in the countryside, you know. We're not all chinless, undereducated Tories, ready to bludgeon you to death with the butt of a blunderbuss just for the crime of insulting a horse. Yeah, thanks for that, Agatha Christie. Thanks, Midsummer Murders. You know, I was well into my teens before I realised you could use a rake for anything other than beating an elderly vicar to death. <laughs> I think it's the media. Yeah. I think the media perpetuate all of these narrow-minded stereotypes. Especially when it comes to the countryside's supposed levels of xenophobia, you know. But I can tell you from personal experience, country racists are every bit as prejudiced as any one of your highfalutin city racists. Yeah. Some of the people I went to school with were so racist they were suspicious of passing malarve. <laughs> My French exchange student got burned at the stake for wearing a roll neck. None of this is true! <laughs> You know, it's all part of that myth that the countryside is just filled with white middle-class people who don't like outsiders, and that's just... <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you know, I'm a white middle-class man, I don't mind admitting that. I've got all the things that middle-class men have usually got, you know, I've got a North Face jacket. <laughs> I like James Corden and Breaking Bad. I've even got a second-hand Crugier frying pan that I bought from a farmer's market. I don't know what's expected of me. I try and keep up with the Joneses, but they keep moving the goalposts, don't they? In my parents' day, all you need to be middle class was an avocado bathroom suite and a healthily understated fear of the poor. These days, if you don't own an organic pig farm, you've got to run a fucking marathon before anyone will even talk to you, haven't you? Not oh, because middle class people love a marathon, don't they? Oh, they love a marathon! Why are these people exercising? Why isn't it enough just to be alive, occasionally have a biscuit, and try not to murder anybody? Isn't that enough? <laughs> Why are they exercising? I think they're doing it for one reason, one reason alone, and that's to make people like us normal, fat, <laughs> ugly people, people just like us, feel like shit. Well, it's been an interesting experience, then, though. <laughs> I knocked over my wine early and I've gone over, so thank you very much. My name's Phil Jones, my show's called The Landfall, and I'll see you again. Thank you, tonight. <laughs>